Okay, cool. I hope you guys are able to see my screen. Just raise your hands. Let's do a practice. Who, who all can uh, see my screen? You can raise your hands or just say yes. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. Awesome. TK. Lots of responses. Great. Good start. Uh, cool. So, uh, hi, guys. Welcome again to Dropout Academy. And uh, first of all, about me, my name is Mayur Karudia. And I am the founder of Dropout Academy. I have been an alumni of IIT Roorkee. And post, uh, you know, previous to previous to starting Dropout Academy, I worked with uh, uh, Housing.com, Eros International, uh, Ribigo as as product designer. Uh, previous to Dropout Academy, I also ran uh, another virtual reality startup, uh, which was with the name of Outside VR. Uh, we currently sold it to another investor, but but for Outside VR, me and my team also won a national award by the Vice President of India, and I've also been uh, and, and I have also been a speaker at TEDx in Malaysia. So I have been always passionate about uh, designing and as much as I've been about mentoring lately, right? So that is pretty much about me. I like traveling. I like, uh, just like a cliche answer every designer would do, I like to sketch. <laughs> and um, yeah, in my leisure time, I usually spend my time watching, in fact, rather I would say searching what to, what to browse on Netflix and Amazon Prime. I spend very less time watching on those because most of my time is spent in selecting the right movies. But uh, yeah, uh, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much about me. I you can talk to me about uh, design. You can talk to me about technology. You can talk to me about startups. Uh, and I am approachable on LinkedIn. You guys can get in touch with me if you want to have, you know, uh, want to ask something specific. And next we have is uh, Webhub. Uh, Webhub, uh, as I mentioned, joining all the way from Amsterdam. Webhub, would you? Would you like to introduce? Hey, um, hello everyone. So I am a software engineer at Meta. Uh, prior to Meta, I worked at organizations like Amazon and Deutsche Bank. Um, all in all, I have around like five years of experience in the industry. And yeah, I graduated back in 2018 from um, NIT Nagpur in India. And um, yeah, that that's uh, pretty much about me. In my leisure time, I, I generally do lawn tennis. Um, like I, I live in Amsterdam, so they have their own kind of lawn tennis. I do biking and of course, traveling. Great, awesome. Thanks, Babo. Okay, so let's get started. Guys, I will not be speaking about, in general, You know, in contrast to what we usually have the webinars, the format is usually we start speaking about what Dropout Academy is and why should we be joining it and blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'll, I'll uh, jump straight to the topic of uh, how can, in general, in general, what are the some top tech skills of 2023 and beyond and how you can get yourself placed in, in a top product company if you are aiming to do that, right? So first of all, uh, let's, uh, what do you guys think are some high paying tech skills of, let's even remove 2023. What are some general high paying tech skills? What are the skills or areas where you get some really good paying jobs in, in technology? You can, you guys can, you know, bring it here or just unmute your mics and tell it. I am not going to proceed forward until and unless I receive at least five responses. <laughs> What do you think, guys, are some skills? Machine learning, logo designing, okay. Logo designing, surprising, okay. Python, C++, all right. What else, what else, guys? That's tons of, there are tons of skills and technologies. Thank you, Kiran, for the heart, but I'm actually asking for a tech skills. <laughs> yes, so. See, there are a lot of technologies, right? I mean, you must be hearing a lot of your seniors, your brothers, sisters working in tech companies, working as maybe analysts or designers. What do you think are some uh, tech skills that you think can get you really good pay, uh, pay salaries? What we have is AI machine learning, local designing, Python, C++. What else, guys? Just three responses. Java, OK. If you would not have typed in Kiran, I was anyways going to take your name. Uh, all right, so cool guys. I think I think uh, logo designing. I I, I would. Uh, uh, it's, it's a rather contradiction. I mean, uh, logo designing is definitely not a high paying skills. But yeah, as, as per a recent report by Forbes, the the top five high paying skills 
our data science cyber security ux design uh, minded ux design is a third in number full stack development and machine learning ai or artificial intelligence or machine learning what, whatever you might call it right so these are some of the high paying tech skills of uh, 2023 and beyond and let's talk about some of these tech skills uh, first let's talk about what ux ui designing is so again i would ask you guys if if you have ever heard this term ux ui designing before what do you think it means I mean, in, in, in a layman terms, I'm not talking about technical terms or jargons. What do you think UX UI designing concerned with? And the next I'm going to do is I'm going to call each of you one by one by your names and then I'm going to ask you personally. What do you think UX UI designing is related to editing? Okay. Cool. What else? Again, there are no right or wrong answers, guys. Uh, by FX, do you mean uh, VFX or multimedia? If I believe. Okay. Yeah, yeah, cool, cool. Animation, all right, all right. Mm. Any other responses, guys? Any other, anything? Graphic design, very close, very close. Um, cool. So, it's it's. So both the options that you mentioned, guys, graphic designing and motion motion designing or VFX, as you may call it, are uh, kind of very remotely related to UX UI designing. It's not what UX UI designers do to its core. And I'll tell you, let's take, let's take an example. First of all, what we need to understand is what UI UX designing is not. It definitely doesn't involve HTML, CSS, a lot of job descriptions that, that you might come across. Uh, you know, while applying for UI UX design jobs, might ask you Java, HTML, CSS, and whatnot, but that is definitely not a part of uh, you know UX UI designing. What UX UI designing is? Let's understand by an example. If you have two chairs, guys, you go to some some place and you have two chairs to sit on. Which one are you most probably going to sit? If you don't just have two options, left one or the right one, right? Okay, come on, guys. This is pretty easy. Second round, okay. Right. Cool. So we understand that the left one seems a, a bit uncomfortable to sit on. I mean, it's, it's rather unconventional, and we would rather sit on the right one. Okay. And that is all about that. That basically tells you how design can impact your experience or your preferences. Right. Second option. This is a tricky one. Which of these ketchup bottles would you rather want to have in your in your home, or would you rather want to use? Left one or the right one? Right, right, left. Okay, this is interesting. From this, from here, the things are going to get interesting. Some more responses, guys, and then we'll move to. I'll, I'll reveal something interesting. Right, 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 right. Okay. Uh, Ikra said left. I Ikra, would you like to explain why have you mentioned left? Would you like to take a guess here? Would you would you like to or you can just type in if, if you are if you're not comfortable speaking? Ikra, are you here? I'm sorry, I'm very adamant on this. <laughs> it's easy to use. All right, that's quite generic, but uh, all right, I, I'll just explain. So, guys, uh, this and that's the reason I said that it's 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 a bit tricky because right, most of you have said the right the right bottle. But in practicality, in actual use, the left one is more usable. And I'll tell you why. Uh, traditionally, the ketchup bottles used to be like what, what you see in the, in the right one. Yes, Max. That's the right answer, what Max said. So traditionally, when you use the bottle in the right, when it's almost, the ketchup is almost nearing the end, you then have to turn it upside down and you have to tap it from the back. And it's a very tiresome process. A lot of ketchup gets lost in between and then it's very frustrating. And that's the reason nowadays when you see the ketchup bottles, <clears throat> I'm not saying that the right ones are completely disappeared from the market, but what's more usable is left one. And I'll give you an example that you can completely relate to. Have you seen the recent shampoo bottles or the face washes? They all come in the design of the left, left, left kind of design when, when you have to keep those upside down. And it's for the same reason that when they're when they almost nearing towards the end, you can very easily, very easily use it. Yes. 
that's what it is right uh so yeah so so why i gave you these examples was it's 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 like the very basic example these are two very basic examples that are going to help you understand how design plays a role in making a perception in people's minds how does with the same product same branding but just different designing how can one product become better than the other now let's take another example uh, let's say you go to a restaurant and uh, you order a dish that looks something like this um just take an example that that you already know what this is what this dish is and you order this one you already know how what is going to come out how many of you think that this is going to be delicious you would want to order it unless any of you who really doesn't like fruits and they definitely want to see a dietitian you guys definitely need a dietitian in that case so how many of you think that you would want to order a dish like this just say yes or not no yes mag you definitely need to go see a dietitian you would need more fruits <laughs> Okay, just kidding, just kidding. So I'm just assuming. Just take an assumption. Whatever dish is your favorite one in the world, whatever is that one, one, one uh, delicacy that you can never say no to, you order that delicacy in a very fancy restaurant, and then you are waiting for your order to come, right? And it's been 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and the order is still not coming. And when the order finally comes, the waiter or the person serving you the dish finally gives you this cutlery to eat this with. You remember there's there's no tampering with the dish. The dish is still the same. Whatever dish, imagine one dish that you can never say no to in the world. You have that dish on your plate, but the cutlery that the uh, that the waiter gives you is this one, and it's take it's taken almost an hour to deliver it. Would you would you still want to have that dish, or would your experience still be as exciting as it was when you placed the order? Say yes or no. No. Yes, Mac. Okay, jokes on me. <laughs> all right. So, um, all right. So, you would definitely not enjoy having the dish, uh, no matter how how tasty it would have been. All right. So, there's one very simple logic that we have understood here is that there are two aspects to enjoying anything or enjoying any service or a product. One is the product itself, and one is the experience around it. How do you basically enjoy that product itself? Right. So one is the product itself. How does the product look or taste? But the other thing is how does the entire experience around using that product builds like? And that is the core difference between UX and UI design. And we'll try to uh, we'll, we'll try to understand it in simple terms is that UX is the overall experience a person gets when you use a product or a service. That's it, it has to do everything about the product and around the product. The way you use that product, how it, easy it is, how delightful it is. UI mainly relates to how good looking the product is. It is completely related to the aesthetics and visual appearance of the product. So UX has to deal with the overall experience, what all features are there, what all uh, what all add-ons are being given, how do you experience a product. But UI basically deals with the aesthetics of a product. How does the product visually look like? Right. So for in case of digital products, let's try to understand with with maybe an app from Google. Uh, so in case of digital products, what we would call UX is just the features functionalities where different things are placed right so and there are a lot of aspects to ux which is research analysis persona wireframes and 10 more other things which basically constitutes and make ux for a digital product similarly when we the, as soon as we start adding layers of icons illustrations colors and text it becomes ui so ui has to deal with typography and colors spacing alignment illustrations and 10 more other things Right, so that is a simple definition of what differentiates between UX and UI. Uh, also, just one thing I wanted to make make sure is that when you talk about designing in general, or when you when you hear the word designing, you, the the common assumption is that you would you would deal with creativity and artistry and uh, sketching and painting. But but unlike uh, this common myth, UX designing is much more much more to that. It is like a classic case of artistry or creativity mixed with analytics or mixed with Maybe a classic combination of your left brain and the right brain. So now that you have gotten a good idea of what UX and UI is, uh, let me give you, let me ask a question. Okay. What do you think between, so this, the left example is from Craigslist. It's a very popular 
you can say uh, classified website in the US versus OLX, uh, which is all of you must have been aware of this website. Most of the offerings in these are same. What is that one difference that is there? Which, which one has a better UI? Left one or the right one? Which one has a better UI? Understand, I'm talking about UI. Left one or the right one? OK, any more responses? Quick text, quick test. I'm asking about UI. I mentioned UI has, yes, OLX. UI is all about how the product looks visually, how the appearance of the product is going to look like. Right one. Awesome. Yes, that's the correct answer. Um, yes, that's true. <clears throat> okay. So now talk about, and I don't want to give you a lot of gyan about UX and UI right in the first session. It can become a bit overwhelming. Just wanted to understand, make you understand what is the essential different difference between UX and UI. So that if some of you are still in the process of finalizing or maybe deciding what, what is the right stream for you guys to go in, you guys at least have a basic idea of what is the demand or, or what is it that, that essentially is there when you choose a UX UI design. Now let's talk about one thing that you guys would have been wanting to know is what is a growth in design career. So designing UX designing is a very well paying field. And as I have also mentioned that uh, Forbes has also listed it in one of the top three high paying tech skills. I'll not go into the salaries details much, as you can also see in the screenshot, but the, the design UX designing is a really, really well paying field. And even freshers can start earning anywhere between eight to 10 LP very easily. And in our academies, we have had people who have who have gotten those kind of packages as freshers. So now the question is, if you are a UX UI designer, if you already learned it or you're still learning it, how do you get a high paying job in a product company or maybe in a service company as UX UI designer? So uh, there are four core areas where you should be focusing on. I'm not I'm not talking about the skills of UX design that you should know good research, you should be doing a portfolio, you should be doing uh, you know persona. I'm not I'm not talk talking about the details of the skills. Rather, I'm speaking about what are in general the skills or what are the prerequisites that you would need to get placed at a high package. And the four requisites are uh, one is a strong portfolio. Second, analytical skill, you should definitely have. So as I said, uh, UX UI designing is a classic example of a combination of amalgamation of left brain versus right brain. So you need creative skills as well as you need analytical skills. The third one is you should have very good grasp of design systems and components. And the fourth is a very surprise one. It's, it's very surprising. It's a special one. Fourth one is something that you would not expect. Uh, you know, it, it seems rather like this is but obvious, you should have it. But in case of designing, this fourth one plays a very, very crucial role. And the fourth one is communication skills. Uh, I'll, I'll come to that why communication skill plays a very important role in, in when you want to get placed at UI, as UI UX designer. But let's talk about how we, Dropout Academy, can help you get to these four areas. Uh, make sure that you have these four requisites uh, when, you, when you apply for jobs. Right. So when it comes about what do you know about UX UI designing, should you have any kind of preconceived notion or prerequisites, or you should already know about designing or Photoshop or Canva for that matter? It's really not necessary because when you join us, when you join Dropout Academy, we'll be teaching everything from scratch. And all our curriculum, uh, whatever curriculum we have, has been built for people who absolutely have no idea about designing. And the curriculum has been built in accordance with the industry needs. So, so we have a lot of hiring partners and we are in constant touch with these hiring partners to understand what the requirements are. And accordingly, cohort after cohort, I'm not even saying year after year or month after month, every cohort we update our curriculum to make sure that we are following the trends, what the, what, what the industries need, what the companies are needing. Right. So the curriculum is absolutely in tandem with what the industries require. So talking about the first thing, how do you develop analytical skills? There are a lot of things that we'll be doing in the cohorts that we teach our students. Uh, some of them being the design thinking process, user research, market research, persona, wireframes, and so on and so forth. Uh, by doing a lot of these activities, we will help hone your analytical skills and research skills, which are very crucial when it comes to UX UI design. And the reason is that, that, that I said is that a lot of people have a myth that designing is all about creating beautiful sketches or beautiful patterns, but it is just half, uh, or, or what, what I would rather say, it just constitutes to 50% of what a UX UI designer does. 
the remaining 50% is your research and analytical skills right so as much as you have artistic skills you would already be needing you would also be needing very good research and analytical skills second comes is a design system and components for that we'll be telling you about we'll be teaching about color theory typography figma uh design systems and components so we'll also be telling you about we'll be also teaching about what material design guidelines are what different companies in the world what kind of design language they are using for example oracle facebook google microsoft uh you know airbnb what all these companies are following what kind of trends they are following and how you can learn from them so so components and design system are very very important aspect of uh, of of being a ux ui designer and, and and i'll give you one fun fact here it might not really be a fun fact anymore it's fun fact for me although so uh, earlier design systems and components was expected from people who used to have at least one or two years of experience uh, you know people who would have slight experience in ux ui designer and then they would be given an, uh, given the task of maybe building a design system from scratch nowadays scenario has changed the expectations of companies have grown you know except you know exponentially and now even fresher designers are expected to work on design systems they are expected that we'll just tell you what needs to be built and you can build a design system from scratch what is design system i'll not go into the details uh, it's it's another topic altogether but yeah this is a very important topic uh, you guys can probably learn or uh, browse on their own on your own but design system and components are very crucial and there are certain aspects that we'll be teaching you to make sure that you are very competent while building design systems from scratch third is a strong portfolio no no designer can apply to any job rather than saying not apply to any job no designer will get selected to any job without a strong portfolio maybe unlike other professions unlike other skill sets you can a resume is just good enough in case of designers if you do not have a portfolio you will never you will have 0.0001% of getting uh, you know getting a job so a portfolio a very strong portfolio rather is is a mandate to get a good good job as a designer and throughout your curriculum throughout your cohort that you will be following in dropout academy you will have you will be working on two detailed portfolio projects along with that every week you will be working on small assignments and activities and that constitutes to close to 40 almost 40 50 assignments you will be doing throughout the cohort along with two big case studies so make so, so we make sure that by the end of the cohort you would already have a very very strong portfolio and the fourth as i was saying is communication skills and i'll tell you why it is very important i have seen people and again we have been talking to a lot of industry experts we have seen people who have had these three things analytical skills design systems a very strong portfolio we still have people in our in our uh, cohort but what they only lacked in was a communication skills and that has really stopped them getting a job that they truly deserve what do you mean by communication skills does it mean only maybe communicating in english probably part of that what is more important is that you have to be confident speaker while uh, you know while while talking to others while talking to stakeholders and i'll tell you why designing is a very people oriented job uh, when you are designing you will not be working in silos you will not just be working on your desk and designing all month or all year long and just uh, you know share the final presentation via an email it's a very people centric job you will be working with real people maybe every day so you have to talk to real users then you have to present your designs to your your stakeholders your managers your your ceos and hence hence it is it becomes all the way more important that you have very clarity of thoughts and when you explain things you have to be very very good orator i would rather say and i'm telling you people who have exceptional design skills have just been not able to get good jobs because they were not able to explain their their uh, uh, their designs they were not able to present them properly and that is the reason i have uh, that that is the thing with a lot of people uh, they eventually wonder why are we not getting placed why are we not getting the jobs that we deserve and to make sure that all our students are good orators they have absolutely fantastic communication skills uh, we have we, from day one itself we provide them with a dedicated career coach who is going to help them with the communication skills in general who is going to be conducting mock interviews every week right from day one and then they'll be there with you throughout your journey of the cohort to make sure that by the end of these four months of your cohort your communication skills are fantastic and you you can present your ideas as well so that will be they will be having a dedicated career coach right from day one so now talking about i've been speaking a lot about ux ui in general and and what 
makes you get a good paying job and now i'll be telling you i told you that i'm saving it for 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 the for the later part of the session what drop out where dropout academy comes in so dropout academy we we basically it's a, it's a place where you can learn high paying tech skills free of cost how free of cost we do not charge anything up front to our students and for that we have a very rigorous shortlisting criteria i'll talk about that later but yeah uh, if you get selected for one of our cohorts you'll be learning free of cost with us and we'll make sure that you get a job by the end of the cohort so currently the skills that we or the technologies that we teach are ux ui designing and full stack development uh so the vision of dropout academy is very simple uh in my own family i'll tell you a story uh, i'll not go into too much details of it in my own family one of my cousin was struggling she was an architect and she was struggling with uh, learning good uh, or you would say she was struggling with uh, salary and she 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 was uh, she was responsible for her entire family to take care of their finances and then uh, we got into talk and then i trained her for ux ux ui designing i enrolled her for dropout academy and uh, of course her main challenge was because when she was not earning she was not able to pay the hefty fees of other academies so uh, she after a due diligence after uh, some shortlisting test she got enrolled to dropout academy and within a span of four and a half or five five months it took her and she got a job that paid almost 400% hike 400% i'm not kidding in a in a mumbai based well funded startup and yeah that's the story and from where from there it, it started that a lot of people are there who some of them can can afford to pay for that also we have a plan of upfront payment but people who cannot afford uh, they can enroll in our courses get selected and then they'll only have to pay after they get placed uh, a little bit about our journey um, we started in 2019 with a vision to make tech education accessible to all uh, the highest package one of our students some of our students have gotten is 20 lpa the average ranges to 7 to 8 lpa and we boast a very high placement ratio of 90% and i have already told you about the curriculum every cohort we change our curriculum and update our curriculum to make sure that it is in line with what what the industry needs uh so in case some of you are wondering is it going to be a recorded session if you join our cohort will the sessions be recorded uh will i be you know will i be able to speak with the mentors directly and how it is going to go so all the sessions are going to be live sessions we have pay after placement every session you'll have activities and assignments and so on and so forth we, we can talk about that later <clears throat> right like and job assistants and a dedicated career coach and uh, so if i only speak about ux ui designing we have mentors from microsoft google housing.com and delivery and in in our full stack cohort as well web is already here so we have people from meta we have people from microsoft google and a lot of tier tier one companies so i think i have spoken enough um before i before i uh, you know before we change gears and uh, i uh, you know webo webo starts with the session uh, i would like to know if any of you have any questions or doubts maybe as far as ux ui designing is concerned any questions or doubts okay i feel i was able to explain everything in that case all right uh over to you webo i let's let's hear from what webo has to say yeah hey hello everyone so yeah uh, i'm gonna walk you through um what is full stack development and then um just just gonna tell you how you can get into uh you know many good organizations and how you can do your best to get into those organ those organizations so um first of all i just want to ask anyone uh, if, if if anyone knows or i have heard this term full stack development anyone even even if you have heard it anyone even if you have heard about web development or anything okay i i, I take this now so um let's let's actually move forward um uh, next slide please okay um so full stack development in general is uh, developing a certain tool or a, or a web application right uh, which would have a front end or a back end and then there is a logic that that it that is present in the back end right and then of course you would have a database where you would save your data and then manipulate that data right so in simple terms um if you if you use any website i would take i would take an example of maybe amazon right almost everyone must have used amazon 
So when you open Amazon, you would see an interface where you can interact with the website, right? You can search for anything or you can filter out things, right? Uh, let's say you want to buy a laptop, you, you would just search for a laptop on your search bar and then it would show a number of results for laptops, right? Um, so whatever that you see uh, uh, or, or interact with, right, that is a front end, right? The website, the, the things that you are typing. And whenever you search for something, there is a back end process that uh, does all the logic, right? You search for a laptop, it will, it will query the database, it will find all the laptops that you have searched for, and then it will show it in the, uh, on the UI. Um, and that's how it works, right? Everything uh, in the full stack development. Uh, so yeah, as a full stack developer, um, you would have like these sort of um, uh, tech skills where you would be developing the front end, you would be developing the back end, and, and you would be uh, inter interacting with the database. Yeah, um, let's move forward. Yeah. Um, now, how do you grow or how do you see a full stack developer as a, as a you know, a career uh, or as a, as a future uh, where you want to uh, where you want to present yourself and where you want to give um, uh, your everything and you want to build your career in the full stack development. So these are just um, some of the stats um, um, where. Okay, uh, uh, cool. Did, did the slide change? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Weber. Why? Uh, do you want me to move uh, previous to the previous slide? Yeah, yeah, this is. Yeah, um, so I was just explaining to everyone that um, this is the demand that we have right now. And uh, of course, if you see um, India as a country, right? In 2009, we had like 3.4 uh, 3 million um, uh, requirement for the full stack development, full stack developers. And um, and it is projected that we are going to need like more than 1.6 million. That is a huge number. And India, um, I, I always see India as a, as a tech driven country where we are, we are growing at a very fast pace as compared to uh, all other countries that I see. Um, so if you want to build your future in the full stack development, um, India is one of the uh leading uh countries um uh, where you can you know build your career as a full stack developer yep uh, next slide and of course um as mayur also mentioned in the previous slide right um it is one of the um top five high paying tech skills uh, for the 2023 and i do expect that um to move forward in 24 25 and so on <laughs> Yeah. Um, now, how do you grow as a, uh, in, a, in, a, in a full stack development role, right? Um, so every organization have their own hierarchy, but in general, the, the slide that you see, right? Uh, this is how um, you, will, you will generally grow uh, in, the, in, the, in the full stack development and, or, or as, a, as, a, as a developer. Um, you will generally start with a junior developer or a normal software engineer as a, as a straight out of college or a fresher. Um, and the expected uh, CDC that you, you will get right now in the market is around 10 to 15 lakhs. And then, of course, um, with the, with the uh, experience that you gain in the industry, you're going to become a more senior developer. And then eventually, you will become a tech lead. And then you would have more options to go into the CTO. Or you can maybe start your own company uh, or a tech-driven company. It's, it's on you, right? Um, so yeah, that's how you will grow. Um, yeah. So how do you how do you uh, get a high-paying job as a full-stack developer? Uh, the first thing that you would need is um, uh, experience in the cutting-edge technologies that we use uh, in the market right now, right? Um, with all the uh, so so, let me tell you. Uh, the tech industry changes very frequently, and you will all, always need to, uh, you know, keep yourself updated. So there will be a lot of new technologies that will come, um, and you will have to uh, learn those things, and then you will have to, uh, you know, gain some experience. Now, <clears throat> in order to get a high-paying job, for, the thing that you need is um, uh, the highest uh, um, or the most you know demanding skills um, uh, in, in in the full stack development so right now if you if you if you have heard of these terms right react or angular or node.js right these are the uh, one of the top tech uh, top uh, skills that everyone is looking for in 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 any any organization so from what all from what i see almost all organizations use these kind of technologies and if you have one of this skill set you are probably going to grab a very high paying job in one of those organizations Next slide, please. Yeah. 
Now, um, uh, I just talked about what is full stack development, but um, when you want to, you know, go into this top tech organizations, uh, what do they expect from you? Um, you know, uh, what do they see? What do they look at you when when they want to um, hire you at these organizations? The first thing is uh, definitely would be um, the strong fundamentals of computer science and programming. Um, of course, you would also need to have a data structure and algorithm skills. Um, uh, a good communication and definitely a team prayer because uh, in every organization you would have to work with a team. So, yeah. Um, next thing would be a good resume and and prior projects. So um, we are going to help you with building a good resume. We have been in the industry for for a very long time now, and we know exactly what these organizations are looking for, right? uh we are going to also help you with um uh, with learning this new new tech stacks or or the demanding um, tech that everyone every every other organization is looking for um and we are going to help you you know find a project or uh, we are going to give assignments where you will be building those projects and then you can add that to your resume uh so that you can represent yourself in a much better way uh, so these companies can maybe you know um, shortlist you and then find something uh that's that's um they are looking for next slide please yeah um so yeah and dropout um uh these are this is the glimpse of what um uh, you will be studying um uh as in, in as a part of full stack development right um node.js as i already mentioned uh, these are the these are the uh one of the high uh top paying tech skills that you will be needing um, uh, uh, to make the career in full stack development html css react and then mysql of course as a, as a database yeah um yeah i'm gonna pause here um anyone have any uh questions There is any questions regarding uh, full stack development, web development in general? Okay, we can probably take the questions in the in the last round. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Thanks, Vabu. Thanks a lot. Um, so yeah, continuing to uh, continuing the session, we are almost towards the last leg of this session. So as I already mentioned, we have mentors from some from tier one colleges and industry and and companies, both in UX UI designing and full stack development. And uh, yeah, so I think uh, to, just, just to just to give you like a sort of comparison of uh, when you go in the market and you look for maybe UX UI design courses or full stack development courses, the prices are really really high. And as I also mentioned, that we uh, we do not in, not only have uh, a pay after placement model, but let's say some of some of you might be very confident about getting a job if you just get the right skill sets. We also have like an upfront payment model. So, but but yeah, but yeah, the, the core thing that separates us from the rest of the academies is that we handpick the right students, train them in the right way, and then they can you know they can learn with us completely of cost. Uh, so we already have partners with some of the uh, tier one, tier two, tier three startups, a lot of smaller startups, but a lot of bigger and and well funded startups as well, and hence uh, we have like a dedicated placement teams that starts working the day the day from when you join in and as i mentioned you would already be having you would also be having like a dedicated career coach and that just not kicks in when you are done with the course that actually stays with you right from the day you join in to make sure that you are groomed in the right way uh, from day one and uh, again not to emphasize too much on how many students got placed because i have already given you the data uh, and that is also there on the website on our youtube channels as well a lot of success stories so I'll not go into the details, but I would specifically, there's one story that I would definitely want to share with you. Uh, her name is Karuna, and she did one of our cohorts in UX designing, and it's a, it's a quick video. Uh, let's let's have a look at that. Let me share my screen. I think it might not be visible. Um, yeah. Hello, my name is Karuna Agarwal. Um, so I'm an architect by profession. After my graduation, my passion uh, sh shifted from architectural designing to digital designing. So other courses were like, you have to pay first and then study and then. So after that, your job is not that is none of their concern. But here, 
once you have a job in your hand then only you pay right abhi koi tension nahi hai because if i am earning then i can pay him so my user took our classes he was a um, he was our mentor matlab it was the best best experience one could ever go through like if you are interested in designing just go ahead do not think do not give it a second thought or something just do it so right she was she was karuna like one of our earlier cohort members and uh, yeah so uh, so now uh, w- w- what do you have to do if you want to get enrolled uh, as mentioned that we'll be doing everything in our capacity to make sure to train you in the right way and uh, we have a, we have a, as mentioned we have a very rigorous process if you want to go for the pay after placement model uh, usually you start with applying on the website <clears throat> then uh, if you get and, and there's a certain short screening test after application as well uh, the screen students are then given access to the demo lectures they attend the demo lectures and based on the demo lectures then there's an el- eligibility test only if you pass the test eligibility test and this test is going to be based on the demo lectures right so it's not something that you would need to have a prior knowledge we would already give you demo lectures on the basis of that there'll be a test and people who qualify that test will become a part of the cohort and then they can start with this journey uh, with us so that is like a quick process and uh, yeah that's it from our side guys that's uh, that's it from robert academy and uh, let me know uh, me and webham know if you guys have any questions any doubts anything that you want to discuss with any okay. other concern even if it's not related to ux ui designing if it's related to tech in general uh, yes support hi I, i just wanted to ask like what's your payment model look like uh, how much do you need, uh, do we need to pay you after we get placed uh it's a uh, 15% for 18 months once you get placed it's 15% for 18 months okay uh, and like uh, what if we pay up front uh so the those details are there on the website so i think for ux designing it's somewhere around 65 68 after discount uh and for full stack it's uh, 85000 oh, okay thank you uh website link yes uh madhumita could you could you share the website link you you are already part of the group right yeah and uh, we are if you ask about where is our branch we are headquartered in gurgaon and uh, yeah we also have offices in pune okay one more thing i just need to ask sorry for yeah. uh, uh, i want <coughs> sorry is it an, uh, is it in person or is it like completely online yeah so so the uh, uh, yeah uh, important thing that you asked uh, by headquarter i mean that the team is based out of gurgaon although all of us are working remotely and the sessions are all all happening uh, online live sessions but then they are all online we do not have any offline uh, you know centers okay and like uh, what is the main framework uh, that you guys teach uh, uh, framework in uh, front end uh, webo would you want to take this yeah uh we're going to teach you uh, react js um uh, and then node js so react js is a library which you could use to build you know ui uh, we're going to also teach you html css javascript uh, everything that you need uh, for the front end development and of course we are going to also give you a glimpse of uh, back end development as well so you're going to be a, a a better um, you know an overall uh, full stack developer okay. also version controls get and get up yeah 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 of course um it was it, it's a part of the process so you uh, get all your and... next batch starting uh so apuru next batch is starting in february the dates are not decided yet but second week in uh, second week in february dates so we are still having the shortlisting test once that is done we'll be announcing the dates okay. so actually uh, like uh, i have we have an, uh, like this uh, i'm so from the batch we are in uh, i'm from kg somia so like we have exams next month in march so i i was planning to like uh, join from after, after the exams are over so so, so uh, like in, in that case apur we have cohorts almost every two months one and a half months two yeah. months uh, one of the yeah. recent cohort is about to start in uh, february but if you plan to join it maybe after march we can we will probably have any any other cohort that will be starting then and then you okay. can inquire with us once again you already have madhumita's contact and you can inquire okay. who's contact sorry Madhumita, uh, who has been coordinating with you guys? I, I think you guys have a WhatsApp group, right? No, no. I, actually, I'm from KJ Somia, and I just like uh, we we got a uh, me this uh, Google Meet link uh, oh, uh, on our official group. 
Got it. Yeah, yeah. So in that case, you can just apply on our website, and there's a contact on the website uh, uh, itself. You can contact uh, the concerned person. She's her name no. is Madhavika. She's also part of this Google Meet. So she Hi, yeah. Yes, and you can also so yeah, uh, with Riddhi, and she can coordinate uh, with all the students. Okay, so <laughs> I was just wondering, like, if you guys have any, any Twitter or LinkedIn handle the, where we can connect. Uh, if yes, I have any queries, have, so. yeah, yeah, we do have LinkedIn handle. Uh, me, my, uh, you can connect personally as well with me, Webhav or Madhumita. Also, we are there on Instagram, so we usually post all our recent updates there as well. Okay, so like, uh, can you give us uh, links or anything? Yeah, yeah. So Madhumita, you can just post it in the groups maybe later. Okay. Yes, I and... that. Cool. Uh, uh, Monik, I think yeah. As I mentioned, our our uh, uh, as such the company is located in Gurgaon, but all our sessions happen online. So we have people from different parts of India joining us on online in these meet sessions. Uh, any other questions, guys? Any other things that we can help you with? Cool. If we, Madhubita, should we wrap up? I think yes. If there are no further questions, uh, that's it for today. Awesome. So, thank you, everyone, for joining in. Thank you, Riddhi, for coordinating. And thanks, Mayur and Vaibhav, for taking out time and leading the session. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.